Hi there, friends. It's Diane, the Creative Inkster, and it's Tuesday, November the 9th. I'm going to show you the angled wrap card tonight. I apologize for being a little bit late, but I got to say I had a really good reason. Today is my daughter and son-in-law's second wedding anniversary, and I got all caught up in watching their wedding video again. So I realized when I looked up at the time that it was coming up two minutes to six. So here I am jumping in now. So this beautiful card I received from my friend Leanne Livingston, who lives in uh, Kindersley, Saskatchewan. And she shared this one in a swap with our group. And it is uh, highlighting the stamp set for Unto Us. Glory to the newborn king and hark the herald angels sing on the outside. And it is a an angled wrap card that was originally, she had seen it done by Alyssa Zwolanik. I hope I'm pronouncing her name correctly in the States. So I want to give you the measurements because I bet you've seen this out there and kind of wondered like me, well, how did we get these lovely angled cuts and get the pattern paper to fit exactly? So I'm going to give um, my best shot at showing you how to do this. So you need a paper trimmer. And the first thing you're going to do is get a card base. So this is like standard 8.5 by 11. And we need our card base to be 5.5 by 11. So normally you'd cut this in half at 4 and a quarter. But, so we're not going to quite get two out of each piece. So this piece is 5.5 across and 11 down. Now we're going to do a little bit of scoring, so you want to bring your scoring blade in. That is the light gray one. The dark gray one, I'm going to, is the one that cuts, and I'm going to push it down near the bottom so I don't get mixed up. And I'm going to score at three and three eighths. So that's right here. And then I'm going to score at seven and five eighths. So I have to open the arm on the extension on the left. So seven and five eighths. And what that gives me between those two score lines is your usual four and a quarter um, inch inside of your card that we're used to having in the middle of, of the card. All right. Now I can close this off because it might just get in the way of things. I'm going to show you how to do this with a paper trimmer. You could use a pencil and a ruler to mark it otherwise, but I'm gonna show you how to do it this way. So with this open towards you, you've got that center piece of our normal card in the middle. And we're gonna go from this score line up here. So I wanna show you how this looks. We're gonna go from this score line, from this flap, we're gonna put that on our cutting track. And we're going to tilt this. You kind of have to move it down on your paper trimmer. And you're going to get this point at the right. So this is the way it is normally. That's the outside edge. That's the scored edge. You're putting the scored edge in the track. And you're putting that outside edge at one and a half. And that's the furthest out um, on this point system here on the Stampin' Trimmer. So it takes a little bit of eyeballing. Of course, you know, you've got the arm in the way to kind of work around. So I found that if I put the score line right in the track and then I wiggle this over to the edge, I'm more apt to get that exactly where I want it to be. Then you're going to cut. So there's your first angle cut off. Then you're going to put it back to the way that it normally is like this. And now we want to get an angle cut from there down. Now you'll see that you can see my purple sh showing through. That's the piece we're going to get rid of. So you're going to put that point you just cut into the track. And you're going to line the bottom right edge of your card at one inch. So stick that one point here, the other point at one inch, and you're going to cut it off. Oops, and we're going to see how that lines up. As I had to wiggle, no, that's perfect measurement. Didn't have to do any wiggling. Now we're going to do the angle cut on the left side. 
So I'm going to basically do the same thing. We're going to find the score line on the left. We're going to put that in the cutting track and we're going to put the outside point at one and a half. So you can see that lined up along here on your paper trimmer. And if it helps to put a little pencil mark or it helps to um, do some kind of little line up here, that's not a bad thing. Depends how well your eyes are with this. So that is at the one and a half inch mark. Fold this over and I'm going to cut. And that piece comes out. So I have this other angle. Now we're going to cut from this piece down here. So I'm going to put this piece in the track and I'm going to line up the outer right, I'm sorry, the outer left corner at the one inch vertical score line mark. I hold my breath that this is going to be a perfect cut. There we go. Now we have it looking like it should look. So here's the original card and there's my Island Tether over top, and you see it, it folds up just nicely. So that's the cutting for the card base. And then you want to do the same thing on your DSP pieces. So they are three and a quarter by five and three eighths. And you're going to do the exact same thing. You just need to be mindful if your paper has a directional pattern on it. You might almost be better to go with something your first time around that is not directional. And that's what I did on this one. I haven't finished the card, but I got this part of the layout done. So I went with something that was quite, um, didn't matter which way it went in. I didn't have to worry too much. So we're going to try this one. So this is the piece. Let's get these scored edges in for the wrap. So this is the piece that's going to go on the left side. So I do have some cutting to do. Isn't that funny? It's going to be a little bit long. I might have to adjust it. Maybe I cut it too long. Maybe I uh, made it too long. About five and three eighths. Oh no, that'll be fine. Okay, so three and a quarter by five and three eighths. So just to do a visual on this. We're going to cut from here to here. So again, I'm going to put this in my track, the top left corner, and the top right corner, I'm going to stick on the outside one and a half inch mark and cut. And that should get the first part of the cut there. And now I'm going to cut from this point uh, down to here. So this right point is going to go in the trimmer in the track. And then I can push this out to one inch. Let me just take a quick visual on that. I'm a visual person, so I have to kind of see how that's going to line up. Yes, I'm going to go down this way. So down to one inch. Measurements should be the same. It's just the card base piece is a little bit different. Let's see. How did that work out? Oh, wonderful. Perfect fit. Okay, so then we're going to do the other side exactly the same way. So here's my other piece of three and a quarter by five and three eighths. Now this time, I'm going to cut down from there down here. So this is where it gets tricky in knowing what you want, direction you want to go in. So I put the top right corner in the track and I line up the left corner at one and a half inches. Close my track. Would you do this on a guillotine type? I don't think so. Oh, hey, <laughs> I'm busy talking away to myself, not realizing people have joined me. Thank you for joining me, Glenda and Vicki. 
So there's this piece getting up on this side. Now I want to do the cut from here down. So from that outside shorter corner, I want to cut down this way. So I'm going to put that left corner in the track and I'm going to line up the bottom left, no, <laughs> the bottom left piece at one inch. Okay, so here's the piece I cut off. We're going to go from where I cut off, which is on the left. That goes in the paper trimmer in the track. And this point in the bottom left is going to go to one inch. Hi, Valerie. Thanks for joining. <gasps> Deep breath as we run the paper trimmer through. Okay, that should work. And it does. Look at that. Look at that. So I did read that there's the odd time it's a little short or a little long. It's probably because, you know, things cut off at a sixteenth of an inch. So it might not be perfectly, perfectly cut. And you might need to give it a wee haircut. And at the bottom, I think I am just going to give it just a small haircut on the bottom here. Just a little sixteenth of an inch, not even. Okay, so now I'm ready to glue this together. I'm going to bring back in the beautiful card Leanne did. So you can see it. And I'm going to grab my adhesive, wherever it may be. And get my pieces glued down. So here's the right hand side. And then you can put a belly band on it to close it, or you can leave it just as beautifully as it is to fold over. So you just cutting that little sixteenth of an inch off was was just perfect. And then this side here, this is gonna glue down here. I find it easier if I open it up like that. So I'll run by the measurements again at the bottom of the video so you have those. Oop, come on you. Line this up quite just like so. There we go. So there's Leanne's gorgeous card. And I haven't decorated my two ones yet. I will do that because I think I like the um, designer series paper so much. I'm just going to put a large greeting or a large flower or something on them. But I wanted to give you those measurements. So your card base is five and a half. Let me put this here so you can take a peek. Your card base is five and a half by 11. You're scoring it at three and three eighths and seven and five eighths. That gives you your usual four by four and a quarter by five and a half. Um, then you are going to get your DSP at three and a quarter by five and three eighths and cut them at the same angled way. All right. I hope you like this. I've been wanting to do this card for quite a while, and I think it just turned out so wonderfully. And my thanks to Leanne for this beautiful swap card I received in the mail. Alrighty, have a lovely evening. I shall see you next week. Thanks for joining. Bye.